Hello and welcome to this episode of Cosmic Court Tarot. So you can see before you, I have yet another deck to show you and to look at myself because I just got this deck. So I'm really excited to see what the pictures and the cards look like too. I found it at my local mall. I've actually been looking at this deck, The Beauty of Horror Tarot, you can see, by Alan Roberts. This is the colored version. There is a version of this deck that is black and white and it's there for you to color as well. But I'm not the best at staying in the lines when it comes to that. And I actually have a coloring book of tarot cards that you're supposed to like punch out and color too. But I have yet to finish them and I've had it for four years now. So when I found this at the local bookstore at the mall, I was over the moon because I've wanted this deck since Christmas. And Amazon, last time I checked, was sold out of it. So when I found it today, I was really excited about it. So now we'll take a look at the cards, see what the illustrations look like and stuff like that. And you can look at it at the same time I do because I have yet to see this deck. I've already taken the cellophane off, as you can tell, which leaves this nice little thing that looks like it's the back of the thing, back of the deck. It kind of is just a piece of paper, but I can take some like rubber cement or something and hook it on there. And I might actually do that. I'm not sure yet. That's what the back looks like. And then without that, that's what the real back looks like. And inside we have the guidebook. This is a very nice guidebook. It's very color illustrated and very colorful and looks to be very detailed as well. So we'll set that aside, get the cards out. You can see they're nice and brand new. It's still in the cellophane or the plastic or whatever you want to call it. Got this nice little thing here where you can just lift it out. I love decks that have those kind of things in them. So then you're not like dropping the cards out onto the floor or anything like that, trying to get them out. So we'll take this off. Oh, not having much luck with that. Give me one second. Okay, pause the video. Got the, card, the cards out of the plastic. So you didn't have to watch me do that. That would have been annoying because I was annoyed when I tried to do that. But here are the cards. This is the back. So it's one of those decks, like you can tell as soon as you pull the card, whether it's going to be upright or reverse, because the picture on the back is upside down otherwise. Which I really like decks like that. I think I mentioned this in before in videos, because it, it, I'm not a fan of reading reversals. I mean, I know how to, but I'd rather not because I feel like it's a block of energy and I just, I like giving empowering readings and positive messages and it makes it hard when they're reversed. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to show you the deck. So we'll start with this card. Let's go through the deck. Start with the Fool. Magician. The High Priestess. Well, this deck, like I said, is called the Beauty of Horror. And when I first saw it, like, I've never seen a deck like it. It's absolutely beautiful. The illustrations are perfect. They're so dark and creepy, but so fascinating at the same time. Chariot's actually a mummy in a coffin with wheels. That's interesting. Strength and the hermit. It's like Leatherface decided to kill a rabbit and use that as a face. I suppose that's better for people. Wheel of Fortune. Justice, the hangman, again a mummy, death, temperance, the devil, it's a very interesting illustration of the devil. I love the collar to it and like the look on his face. There's the tower, the star, the moon, the sun, judgment and the world and then we have the suit of cups so we'll just set these aside for a second and pile here for the cups two three the four of cups now in this illustration it's as if the character or whatever kind of character he is kind of notices this cup over here which usually the four of cups is you're so focused on these three cups and feeling bored that you don't notice the positive cup, happy cup that's being offered to you. But in this one, I feel like the character does know it's being there. There's the five of cups. 
And he seems to be looking towards the front. He's kind of still looking down though, so maybe still focused on the past. Six of Cups. Seven of Cups. Eight. Nine. Ten. The Page of Cups. The Knight of Cups. The Queen of Cups. And the King. We have the Ace of Pentacles, and the Two, the Three, the Four, yeah, I'm going to scoot all these over so they're more in the center, sorry about that. Put those on top of there, and then we just have two piles, Major Arcana, Minor Arcana. The Five of Pentacles, Six, Seven, Eight. Nine of Pentacles and the Ten. Page, Knight, Queen, and King. We have the Ace of Swords. Absolutely, I love that illustration of the Ace of Swords. The Two of Swords, the Three of Swords, Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, and Ten. The Page of Swords, the Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords, and the King of Swords. And last but certainly not least is the Suit of Wands. We have the Ace, the Two, the Three, the Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight, Nine, Ten, the Page, the Knight, the Queen, and the King. Now when reading tarot, I've always found this like really helpful. Um, when you get to the core cards, what I like to do when I do readings is like share different paragraphs. There's like the paragraph that um, talks about like the meaning of the card interpreted to the question that you ask. And then I like to do the astrological aspects of the cards and then the numer numerical aspect of it, like the numerology of it. And when it comes to the court cards, you know, page, knight, queen, and king, there are no numbers specifically attached to them. But if you think of it this way, they follow this card right here, the ten of wands. That make the Page of Wands an 11, the Knight of Wands a 12, the Queen of Wands a 13, and the King of Wands a 14. So that's just another like little trick that you can use to, to read tarot and like be able to have like more things to say and like more ways to talk about it. Because you can reduce those numbers like 14 would be 5 and it's change and transformation. So you know, you're confident in yourself, you're really leading and you're passionate about life. That's the King's brain then you know you're changing your life for the better and you're transforming it into what you want to be because you feel confident in yourself and in control of yourself. Well, that's a look at the cards. So we can see, and they're really, I like the, the texture of the cards. Some might complain that they're a little bit thin, and they are, but if you're careful with their decks, and like I've showed you before, um, the way I shuffle is just to lay out the cards it's like such and then keep stacking them. And when I do this, I talk to the cards, tell them what I'm trying to ask, thank them for being here and stuff like that. So you get that idea. Before we end it though, I will turn to a page in the guidebook, just a random page, and read you what it says. So you get an idea what the guidebook's like. So I love using guidebooks. I'm actually peeking, so just open to a page. The Eight of Wands. It says, this is one of the most mysterious cards in the deck, majors included. Partly this is because there are no people in the picture. And by people, I mean, of course, demons, ghouls, vampires, zombies. Who launched the sticks? From where? And how do they all travel in parallel lines? Some are ahead, some behind, with the gaps between them wider or narrower, but they stay strictly parallel. What is their source? The sky? Do they travel from the realm of spirit and mystery to the material so-called real world of earth? The mountains appear lifeless, barren. The wands contain leaves. Will they bring life to the harsh desert? Or are they, are they cards in a reading bringing us a message? And we have the meanings down here. And it says energy lining up, things on the move, new life, excitement, resurgence, help from a, some mysterious source. And the reverse means disruption, scattered energy, and obstacle that breaks a plan. See, that's why I don't like reversals. They're just so negative. 
And yes, this is a dark deck. Like, disturbing zombies, ghouls, witches, that kind of thing. Although, I didn't see a witch, but, you know, just ghoulish and scary. But it is the beauty of horror terror, and that's why I like it. And when I read the guidebooks, they... I mean, I know the meanings, and it's always good to trust your intuition, but I feel like the guidebooks, they're what the creator of these decks really wanted you to know. Like, there's little pieces of there that you might not have thought of yourself, and it adds something to your reading every time. Like, just the example that I just gave you, the Eight of Wands, it's never come to mind before, like, asking questions of where those wands come from. It's always just been this a fast moving energy because you're passionate about something. But really there has to be this momentum and this force that pushes those wands out, that gets that excitement out. So that's just a new way to look at the Eight of Wands that I'll probably use for the rest of my life. But that's a look at the cards, at the guidebook, and of the deck itself, the beauty of horror, tarot. The Gorgeous Colored Cards by Alden Robert. This is Fear Your Future. Yeah, again, nothing on the back because that paper fell off. But that's really the only complaint I have. And I'm really thinking I'm just going to fix that. You know, just take a piece of like putty or sticky stuff and stick it on the back. Good, then we're good. But I really should not be allowed to go into the bookstore or the mall anymore. Because every time I go in there, I see a deck. It's like, I have to have this. I haven't been able to see it somewhere else before. And so when I see it and I have it in my hands, I don't really want to leave it. So that's this deck. If you have an interesting deck, a really unique deck or something like that, and you want to share it with me, then send it my way. Send me a message. You know, I will give my address and I will do an awesome review for your deck too. That's up to you. And as always, you can receive a reading with this deck or any deck in my collection. No personal one just for you. Follow me on, on the socials if you want. I'll leave that information down in the description below. And as always, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.